2018 is a good balance between populism and pragmatism, says Dr. Pawan Goenka of the m and Group. Let's ask him what he means by that and to elaborate a little bit more on the impact of this budget across the corporate sector. Dr. Goenka, thank you very much for speaking with us on Bloomberg Quint. What did you find that was pragmatic in this budget? Well, uh, let me uh, start off by saying that uh, let's look at fiscal deficit first, okay? Uh, fiscal deficit going up to about 5.5% this year was something that many of us had uh, predicted that will happen, and there's no escaping from that. And that 5.5% has happened, but what is pragmatic is that it's back on track. Uh, sorry, 3.5. 3.5, I'm sorry. And what's pragmatic is it's uh, back on track with 3.3% next year. Uh, so, so that is what I would call pragmatic. Uh, in spite of increasing subsidies in some of the very large programs, like the 1.5x MSP, which will, I'm sure, cost a lot of money in terms of food subsidy, uh, it still be able to manage 3.3% in next year. And if you look at math, uh, this is not sort of just uh, a number. Uh, there is uh, math that can justify that 3.3% is a very practical target, doable target for next year. What I also find is that in many of the schemes, uh, there is not a significant increase in outlay, uh, which I would consider pragmatic. What I would also say is there were no new schemes announced, uh, uh, which would uh, again drain on the, on, on the expenditure side. Uh, and, the, and the schemes that we already have in place, uh, many of them are working well, have been reinforced uh, by a little bit more outlay that has been done. Uh, a couple of things that perhaps haven't gotten the headline today because everybody is talking about agriculture and rural and corporate tax and uh, long-term capital gain, uh, but I find it to be very significant is uh, the thrust that has come in this budget and for the first time at least I think so much thrust has come during budget on R&D and on higher education. Uh, putting aside uh, I think one lakh crore uh, for what he called uh, rise uh, is something that is very significant. Uh, to make a program of Prime Minister's Research fellow, Fellows and putting 1,000 crores there, again, is very significant. To talk about uh, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, IoT, uh, robotics, and doing center of excellence for those is very specific. And we have been saying for quite some time that India is lacking in R&D expenditure. And I'm very happy to see this kind of R&D outlet that is being put out uh, by, 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 the, by the finance minister. Uh, the rural health scheme uh, is a game changer. Uh, again, could be very expensive, uh, and I still don't know where the funds are uh, coming from. Uh, it's certainly embedded in the budget somewhere, uh, but uh, that's a game changer. So I find a lot of things that are uh, longer term uh, benefit uh, to the society and to the economy. A few things, of course, uh, uh, could be termed populist, but even there, I would say that to say that farmers should earn 50% uh, contribution on their input cost is not something that one can argue against. And therefore, even that I will not call populist, I would call that need of the hour. You know, Dr. Goenka, when we started programming in the run-up to this budget, the one question we asked of the government and finance minister Arun Jaitley is whether this budget could return the Indian economy to confidence. And that would mean a return in private investment, a strengthening of consumer confidence. Uh, you know, do you believe that the budget has been able to deliver on those counts? I, I'm not sure. It's like you said, the national health scheme or the health insurance scheme sounds interesting, yes. It sounds ambitious, yes, but we don't still know how it's going to be supported, what the outlay is going to be, and whether the implementation is going to justify the ambition. Even on MSP, we're still trying to fully understand what no. the sub budgetary support will be to that. The numbers don't seem to all add up, uh, not at this point at least. And really, whether the implementation of this will work, what will they you know, calculate as the real cost uh, when, when deciding 150%. So th does it feel to you that these are nice sounding ideas, uh, but they don't necessarily restore the confidence in the economy? Well, uh, devil is always in the details, Menka. And uh, like you said, we still don't know uh, all the numbers, how they're going to add up uh, and uh, how the math is working. And probably will become clear in a in, in couple of days. Uh, but in terms of bringing back, back consumer confidence and uh, investment, uh, there, there, there are two ways of looking at it. If you say, are there any direct 
uh, initiatives put in place in this budget uh, for uh, for promoting investment perhaps not too much uh, except for some minor things like uh, employment uh, uh, sub not subsidy but the contribution to uh, new employee cost and so on but these are these are probably not enough to uh, propel uh, investment in a big way but uh, the other way of looking at this would be that the best way to get investment is to see how to, to see uh, use of capacity that means going up of consumption okay? uh, and certainly with the focus on rural economy if indeed the farmers and the rural uh, folks have higher dispensable income discretionary uh, saving and that they can deploy towards buying uh, consumer goods towards buying electronics goods uh, that certainly will uh, increase consumption and that certainly would therefore lead to uh, lead to lead to higher capacity and and therefore therefore investment uh, so uh, was that top of the agenda for the budget i would say no uh, was that uh, sort of embedded in there in an indirect fashion yes a little bit of that i saw uh, probably not enough to look at the kind of investment that government probably wants to see but a small step medium step in the right direction Okay, I don't mean to sound like I'm critiquing the budget and only doing that. But the third thing that struck me as uh, reasonably onerous uh, is the increase in taxes that we have seen to be able to fund some of these schemes, whether it is the National Health Insurance Scheme or the MSP scheme and still maintain some degree of fiscal discipline. So we've seen an increase in customs duty, specifically in the auto sector. There is now a higher duty applicable on CKD units, etc. There is an increase in the surcharge on customs duties. So the 3% education cess has gone away and has been replaced by a 10% social levy of some sort or social welfare levy of sorts. Uh, there has been an increase in the surcharge on uh, high income individuals, uh, those who earn 1 crore and above are paying more, those who earn 50, 50 lakhs and above have now come into that uh, additional surcharge. There is an increase in the education cess from 3% to 4%. There is of course the long term capital gains tax increase and then there is also the fact that uh, you know the promised tax cut for all businesses uh, that the finance minister had committed to in 2015 has now come through in two years only for small businesses and medium-sized businesses. And while I understand that 99% of the businesses will be able to avail of this tax cut, it really amounts to a very small amount. Uh, you know, and, and I don't know whether these businesses have the capacity to be able to restart the investment cycle or not. So, you know, when you look at all of these elements, uh, at the end of the day, are you left with a sense of incrementalism or do you you feel this was the room he had and this was the best he could do <laughs> well uh, I would I would uh, certainly uh, agree with some of the points that you have made here uh, if I was to put on my corporate hat uh, the the biggest disappointment part that I have from the budget is that nothing was done to reduce income tax for uh, for large corporates and like you said that's just 99 percent is fine but uh, it is that one percent who uh, is accounting for most of the tax revenue and there uh, a certain reduction was uh, was required I think because uh, we need to remain competitive uh, globally uh, and uh, the US reducing taxes certainly puts pressure on competitiveness of uh, of uh, many other uh, uh, companies uh, in, in terms of those who are outside US uh, and therefore that is something that I would have expected that a signal will be given uh, this year that uh, the 25 percent target that was set for large corporations will be met maybe not this year but after a couple of years uh, so that is certainly true a uh, little bit more taxation all around uh, uh, is uh, being done in a way that it may seem like okay it doesn't matter uh, but indeed it is an increase in tax uh, and uh, the general uh, wave that I see globally today is not to increase taxes, tax rates, but to reduce tax rates. But given that there's so much expenditure uh, that is required for the economy, given that there is a fiscal uh, discipline that has to be maintained, perhaps there is no other way uh, but to increase taxes. What I'm hoping, though, is that GST collections would be better than what uh, the finance minister has right now taken into his calculations, because once things settle in, once more and more people, businesses uh, start paying GST, I think the collections will go up. Uh, what I'm also uh, expecting is that the 80,000 crore that has been set aside for uh, uh, for disinvestment uh, gives some sort of uh, maneuvering room in case more money is needed. They can probably pull out 20,000 crores. Uh, but uh, the long-term capital gain, I'm not I'm not too uh, 
uh, too concerned. Of, not, I shouldn't say use the word concerned, but I don't think it's unfair. Uh, only uh, from, a, from a viewpoint that, uh, look, uh, if we are earning so much in long-term capital gain, some tax should be paid. Uh, of course, uh, uh, immediately share market uh, did react negatively, but then it caught up. Uh, my concern is that uh, the difference between short-term and long-term now is only 5%. And therefore, will there be any incentive uh, for long-term investments in equity uh, remains to be seen because we don't want people to be sort of churning, uh, going and going out uh, uh, four times a week uh, into, into an equity. So that does, that does come into concern. This one person says sort of got slipped in additional says that increases the income tax and uh, one would hope that all the says that get implemented at a given point of time will come out someday. But uh, but uh, we have additional assets also. But I think uh, end of the day we have you to know, see. You know, we've only seen. I, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. We've only seen cesses increase in this country, and which is not necessarily the responsibility of only one government. Successive governments have used cesses and surcharges as a way you. of you know continuously taxing the same pool of people in a higher and higher way. I mean, today we saw an increase in the education cess. There is a surcharge in the income. There's an increase in the surcharge on the income tax. Uh, you know, uh, and the corporate tax. There is an increase in the surcharge on customs duty. I mean, these are all you know uh, ways of keeping the, st the headline rates low, but you know, continuing to extract more cash. I'll leave with one. I'll end with one final question. As we stand today, uh, which is in the last quarter of this financial year, at the brink of a new financial year, almost. You know, how confident are you of? strengthening consumer demand for the variety of products that M&M sells uh, across the sectors. How confident are you of a solid growth recovery in this economy? Let me uh, say that the two sectors that uh, M&M uh, is most uh, sort of the, the largest two sectors for us, which is uh, auto and tractor, uh, are going through a very good phase right now. Uh, post GST, uh, both sectors have actually shown robust growth, uh, and GST didn't do any kind of a, uh, sort of a negative uh, influence on these. Uh, Tractor last month had uh, almost 38% growth for the industry, and right now I don't see anything, any headwind that will come in in the next 12 months that would make the growth less than what we have seen in the current current financial year. Uh, there are only two or three things that 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 worry me. One is if monsoon, monsoon is very, very bad. I mean, I'm not worried about being 90, 95%, but if it's 80%, then it could have a uh, disastrous effect. Second one is if for some reason interest rates have to go up, that could have a negative effect. And the third one, which is what I call joker in the pack, is the, uh, the crude. Uh, uh, rate. If uh, that goes much above 70 rupees, uh, 70 dollars uh, per, per per barrel, that could also have a negative effect. Other than that, I think uh, these sectors should do very well. Uh, and if these sectors do well, then our finance sector also does very well. All right, Dr. Goenka, we leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us on Bloomberg Quint this budget evening. And that's the view Thank from M&M Group on what budget 2018 holds for India Inc.